Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Hundreds of you will be coming new FY1s in August and as I'm coming to the end of my F1 year, I thought I'd make a video of my top 10 tips to get you through the first few months of F1. So for those who don't know, um, the F1 year is the first year that doctors work after graduating from medical school. Um, I think in the US it's called residency or something, I might be wrong. Um, but here we have a foundation training program which is two years and the first year is called FY1, the second year is called FY2. So in August I'll be moving into my FY2 year and um, making way for the new F1s. I probably said F1 like 10 times now. Tip number one, apps. These will be a lifesaver my top three apps that i recommend you'll be given like you'll be like download this and download that and i downloaded like 15 things on my first day none of which i use besides these three apps. the first one is induction so this is an app where there's every single hospital in the uk uploads their extension numbers and their bleep numbers for staff that work in the hospital so all you need to do is sign up to it go into the app choose the hospital that you're working for um, and if you search, as I can show you here, um, it will give you all of the numbers that you need um, for the departments in your hospital. So it's great. It saves you from going through switch and waiting ages on the phone sometimes. So the second app, something called MicroGuide. So this is an app where each hospital um, uploads their own guidance for antibiotics and microbiology and stuff. So one thing you'll know is when you're going through medical school, you're taught that you treat this with this antibiotic and that with this antibiotic and so on. But when you get to your um, trust and your hospital, every trust has their own antibiotic guidelines and they use slightly different ones for different conditions. So what you do is you download this app in the same way, um, click on your hospital, and when you look for things like community acquired pneumonia and scroll down it will tell you which antibiotics you need to use so you don't have to do something that's outside of your trust guidelines because you'll get pharmacy calling you asking you why you've done that so the third app is um, the BNF this is something you'll use every day um, to check the medications dosing or say for example someone's got renal failure you want to look at the renal impairment kind of changes to your dosing so it's really helpful. Tip number two, if you're ever called to see a sick patient, this being that they've got high temperature or they've got a low blood pressure or they're feeling dizzy or they had a fall, anything, anything that a nurse calls you saying, I'm worried about this patient, can you come and see them? Do Dr. A, B, C, D. Um, examine them in that way, document in that way, and when you're ordering tests and or writing in your plan about what you're gonna do with whatever you found in your examination, always document people can follow why you've chosen to do what you've chosen to do so no matter what situation always refer back to Dr ABCD and that will be a lifesaver so tip number three document 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 anything you do document in the notes so some hospitals will have electronic notes and some hospitals will have paper notes my hospital still has paper notes but they're slowly transitioning um, anything you do you need to document so if you have a family discussion I spoke to so-and-so's son so-and-so's mom discussed this these were the things that um, were concluded at the end of the discussion this is their wishes or whatever or I changed this patient's medication to this or I changed the dose to this for this reason so when people look back at the notes they have a clear idea of why you've done what you've done tip number four use nurses to your advantage so some nurses, they won't tell you, but they do bloods and they do cannulas and they hide it very well because once it's out there, people like to use it. Um, so basically, if you have any bloods or cannulas that need to be done, do ask nurses. So even if you're called, say for example, you're on call and someone's unwell, someone's spiking in temperature, ask the nurse, do they have a cannula? No, put one in please. And can you take some blood cultures and X, Y, Z bloods? And if they say no, there'll be some nurse on the ward, either a sister or a ward manager or someone that can do that. So don't take no for an answer because they're lying. <sighs> Five, something you'll do every day, all the time, will be fluid prescribing. When I started F1 as well, I kind of thought, oh, should I be going through any of my old notes? Should I be revising anything? Should I be like um, brushing up on any of my knowledge? 
No, apart from one thing, which is fluid prescribing. So know the difference between maintenance fluids, if someone's totally not eating and drinking, say for example, they're waiting for surgery, or um, I don't know, they've got bowel obstruction and they're not allowed to eat and drink, etc. So know the difference between prescribing for that and prescribing as a top up for those who don't have enough intake or have got a lot of losses like and they've got a fever or they're peeing loads or they've got diarrhea or they've got a massive stoma output for example um so fluid prescribing i'd say is one of the most important things to kind of recap before you do start your f1 tip number six be polite please there's always a couple who think they're the best and they need to be a dick and having a go at people and being arrogant is the way that things are done um, you're not better than anyone else, you're all working as a team, everyone, um, and the sole reason you're working together is for that patient to get better, and that's what everyone's working towards. So just be nice and be polite, and the polite and nice ones are the ones who are liked more, um, and the ones that nurses actually want to help. Number seven, get to know your hospital and the way it flows. Even simple things like knowing what time a pharmacy closes so that you know what time you need to get your discharge summaries done by so that their medications are dispensed and ready for the patients to go home. Know who your flow coordinator is. So these are members of staff who are involved in discharging patients and nursing homes, residents, and like getting things together for like package of cares at home. So just know how things work and the system. And also, for example, my hospital has something called ambulatory care. So if I want to send a patient home where, where they're well enough to go home, but the investigations aren't complete because the blood results are still pending, but they can be followed up as an outpatient very soon in like two days, they'll get, they will get referred to something called ambulatory care, which is like a little appointment system in the hospital where they get called back and they go through all their results. So for example, find out about things like that and just know how things work and how things flow and how you can get patients moving. Tip number eight, know your eportfolio. portfolio So I think as medical students, we used to use um, e-portfolio. That's, I think that's what the name was, but now we've moved on to Horus. So it's very similar, it's just a different website. Um, it wasn't working very well when we started because we were the first year to use it, but it's fine now. Um, and you'll have core procedures to do. So you'll have 15 core procedures to complete um, until the end of the year. So these will be things like bloods and cannulas and um, local anaesthetic, like loads of different things, but get them done early. When I mean early, don't rush to get them all done in the first month or so, but every rotation that you're doing, try to do at least like five to six every rotation so that you're not in a mad rush by the end of the year because you have to get these competencies done before you sign off. Um, and you have per rotation, you have to do mini kexes and CBDs. So mini kexes are like um, when somebody's watching you examine a patient or do a mini, mini examination and they rate you on that. And CBDs are case-based discussions. So you discuss a topic, a scenario, like whatever it is, and you send someone a ticket so that they fill out being like so-and-so, done this very well, should improve on this, this is like your target, this is your plan web. Great, my camera cuts out. Anyways, so back to the topic, just do your eat portfolio, get it done early, don't be the one who leaves it to the last minute and kind of panics before sign off. Tip number nine, um, nurses usually, so in my hospital, nurses usually hand over around eight o'clock. This is when you get the most calls and bleeps telling you patients are unwell. So a patient will be trending at a low blood pressure or high temperature or high heart rate or whatever it is. And nurses will change over and they'll pick up the OBS chart and be like, oh my God, this patient is scoring high. I need to let the on-call team know, rightly. Um, and you have to go see the patient, obviously, but don't kind of panic and, the nurses will kind of make you panic sometimes and you're like, what? This patient is literally dying, I need to run over right now. Um, do go over <clears throat> quite quickly, but just keep calm and always bear in mind that the patient might have had a low blood pressure and that's normal for them. They might always run at a high heart rate and that's normal for them. Um, but nurses just have a tendency to kind of pick these things up and um, cause a bit of a panic about it. So just be wary of that. And tip number 10 is don't do anything you don't feel comfortable doing. 
So always have this in your mind. If I was in court and a judge was asking me questions, can I justify what I've done? If the answer is no, don't do it. But don't just sit back and say no, find ways to do it. So say for example, it's something you can do as an F1, but you just don't know how to. For example, I didn't know how to insert an NG tube, which is the tubes that go into your nose, to the back of your throat, into your stomach. Um, I just wasn't taught that properly at medical school. And when a nurse asked me to do it, I said, look, I don't feel comfortable doing it because I don't know how to do it properly. Can I get somebody else to do it and whilst I watch? And then the next one, I'll do it for you. So because it's a training program, don't forget, you're an F1 and you're learning. Um, don't just kind of dismiss everything and just be like, I don't know how to do it and kind of sit back. But if it's something you're not allowed to do at all as an F1, so for example, consenting with procedures that you won't be doing yourself, um, writing cytotoxic drugs, for example, like chemotherapies, etc., don't do it. Just be like, um, as an F1, I don't feel comfortable doing it because I'm not allowed under my provisional license, blah, 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 blah. Or if it is something that you can do as an F1, um, but you've just never ever done it before, like for example, when I was in surgery, I was um, doing mini abscesses, just be like, I don't feel comfortable doing this, but can I watch you whilst you're doing it or can you go through it with me? So there's lots of ways of getting around it. And lastly, although it's not a tip, it's something you should always do, is just enjoy F1. It goes by really quickly. I can't believe I'm already at the end of it and I've come around full cycle and I'm gonna start F2 in August. Um, you'll meet amazing people. Your colleagues will be those that you see um, every day, nearly, um, and you'll make great friendships. So just enjoy it, relax and take it in and just make memories. So thanks for watching my video. I hope you've enjoyed it. My next video is going to be a QA. and a um, so if you have any questions you want to ask about F1 or just being a doctor in general, put them in the comments down below and I'll answer them in a video. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!